it's that time again. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal, and this is episode number 27. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you my, from my family farm here in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. So this podcasting will be a little bit about my crafting. I like to knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I like to make jewelry. I like to try any craft once and twice if I like it. Uh, also, I am a professor of physics and astronomy at a local university where I teach classes to physics majors and to general education students. I also volunteer to do planetarium shows and I'm very active in our women's uh, in ac women in academia leadership group uh, where I try to advocate for women in STEM and just women in general on our campus as academic leaders. And also, I am a farmer. I am a third generation farmer to live on this land that my family has lived on for over a century. And I raise beef cattle. I also raise horses. I have chickens. I have geese. I have turkeys now again. Um, I also raise rabbits. And um, I have a retirement herd of several miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, and a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost. And as you can tell from my sweet little co-host Willie here, I am fur kid mom to 14 dogs, six indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside cats, which I know is greater than 16. <laughs> but I'm getting them close to being able to catch them and taking them to get them spayed and neutered. You know, they were a feral colony, or the remnants of a feral colony that was dumped out here several, uh, several months ago. So I'm trying to get them tame enough to take them. But anyway, this podcast, I will talk about some sciencey things. I'll talk about my crafting and I'll talk about farm life. Plus, I always like to end with a few final thoughts. So if that sounds interesting to you, I hope you join us. I want to welcome back all my returning viewers. I sure appreciate y'all listening every week. And if you're new to the podcast, welcome to the Funny Farm. Uh, this is probably not like any other crafting podcast, to be honest. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please give me a like and a subscribe down there and tell your friends. And we're going to move on now with episode number 27 of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. Okay, if you're looking for us on social media, my farm Facebook page is the same name as my YouTube channel name. It is Buckthorn Farms. You can also reach me at my email address through the farm. And I have a Ravelry group for the podcast. It is Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal, where you can find out about our make-alongs and any giveaways and just have some general chit-chat. And you can also find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Doc Firewoman. And I post on Instagram, Crafting Farm, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and I am also on Twitter, but Twitter is where I tend to vent my political leanings. And I'm a big old liberal snowflake for the most part. So uh, if that kind of thing gives you high blood pressure, probably for the best, both, best, best for the both of us if we just stay away from the Twitter. <laughs> especially lately. Uh, but anyway, so um, yeah, we have some make-alongs going on right now. There are currently two make-alongs active in my group. The first one is the spread the warmth or share the warmth. I think I've been calling it both. Uh, the share the warmth make-along where we are aiming to make things for charity. And warmth, sharing the warmth can be literally giving blankets or hats or mittens to people who may be of need or making warm bedding for animal shelters um, or you can take it more metaphorically and you can bring someone warmth who maybe is a little bit lonely during the holiday season or um, has had a, a rough year or something like that. So there's a, a variety of ways to interpret it. I'm pretty wide open in how I will interpret what you're, you consider your act of charity, I guess. I, I'm just going to call it an act of kindness and that it leaves the door wide open. So I will um, trust you to take that uh, to heart and do what you think you need to with that. Um, also, uh, we are running a another make-along called I Am Worth It. And this is where we are going to try to do something kind for ourselves. We are going to try to fill back up our cup because if I've said several times, you can't pour from an empty cup. So um, 
we're going to cast on or start making or something that special yarn or that special pattern or that special fabric that we have been waiting to make for ourselves. And I know a lot of times we make things for ourselves, but there's always that one thing that we've kind of created as we've set that apart as some, oh, that's a special thing or that's some special yarn or that's some, a special item that I want to make for myself someday. And then someday somehow never ends up happening. So, um, Let's be kind to ourselves, too. That's really important as well. So we do have some prizes, and um, we actually I actually got a beautiful surprise box in the mail from Mary Knitter, uh, Mary from California, and I'm going to share that in acquisitions, but um, there is going to be some prizes for the Share the Warmth make-along and the I Am Worth It make-along in the beautiful box of items that she sent me as a very sweet gift. Uh, I was just blown away by it, but we'll talk more about that in acquisitions. So I do want you to participate in those if you would like. I also have a question and answer thread in my Ravelry group. I would like to do a question and answer video or uh, episode at some point. I've had a couple of questions just about the basics of learning to crochet or knit um, and what resources I use to learn. Um, so, you know, but if you have any other questions about my farm or about me or whatever, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll I reserve the right to not answer <laughs> to exercise my, my Fifth Amendment rights if I need to. But I, I most, I'm pretty open minded to most questions. So uh, please post your questions if you want to ask. Uh, there are some other make alongs going on on some of my friends podcast. I know that the Happy Knits podcast has a happy fall knit along going on through the 15th, which is Monday coming up. It's a hat make along. Um, there is also Hats Not Hate going on this month. I'm not sure who's hosting that. Maybe Red Heart Yarn, uh, but Hats Not Hate. I know Miss Shirley was posting because this is anti-bullying month and we're going to talk more about that in final thoughts also. Um, then um, at the the Histor A Historian Knits podcast is having a knit along for her, any of her patterns. She has four sock patterns available. I believe she said two of them were going to be free and two of them were paid for patterns. But of her paid for patterns, she is donating a portion of the proceeds to charity. Um, also, there is a knit along or a make along or a cow cow, a, a crochet and knit along going on. A joint one between Army Wife Knit Life and a crocheting Hoovian are doing the sensational stripes um, make along that is good through the end of the year. That is any fiber craft. Um, so, knitting, crocheting, uh, weaving, I believe they're taking. Um, so anything that's stripes, now it doesn't have to be self-striping, but it has to have clear defined stripes in it and you can double dip in both of those, but you have to be a subscriber to their podcast to be eligible for prizes. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention my two make-alongs, the Share the Warmth make-along runs through December the 15th and the, um, I Am Worth It Make Along runs through December 31st. And I may actually just put both of them on December 31st just to make it easier to keep track. <laughs> if y'all are definitely opposed to that, let me know. But otherwise, I think I may just bump them both to the 31st if that's okay. Um, a little preview of next year. I've already been pondering for next year. I would like to do, um, I have a couple of ideas for next year that I may run for the entire year and then give prizes out quarterly one of them is I'm accumulating a lot of kits. Um, I've got cross stitching kits. I've got needlework kits. I've got um, knitting and crocheting kits. Um, I've got a lot of, I've got quilt kits. I may do a year long kit along where you work down your stash of kits because I'm a sucker for kits. <laughs> as I'm sure some of y'all are. So, um, I'm a suck. I'm a, kind of a sucker for those, so I'm thinking about hosting a year-long kit along and then drawing prizes quarterly, and uh, then having one final grand prize at the end. Also, uh, I was kicking around idea, and I got to talking to Laura from A Crocheting Hoovian on the virtual knit night group that she hosts, uh, which is great fun. It's a wonderfully supportive place to be. I've really enjoyed getting to know the, the people on there. Um, 
about doing a make along we're going to call creature feature where we are going to uh, have a year-long crochet or knit along for uh, amigurumi so critters critters uh, creatures creature feature and I think the way we we were talking a little bit we're gonna have quarterly themes where if you do do one of the themes you get an extra entry but you can make any creature but the aim is is to make one a month and so at the end you'll have 12 and you can put you're gonna there's gonna be one finished object thread with the 12 a composite photo or a mosaic photo of the 12 things that you've made now you can make them all in December for all I care but then there'll be a chatter thread on my group where I will draw quarterly prizes and that's where you can get the double entries if you do the theme there will be one entry per person in the FO thread for my group um, with a with a combined picture of all 12 of your critters or creatures and, and, that's, and we were thinking about themes like um, Under the Sea, or Life on the Farm, or Down on the Farm, or well, in, Welcome to the Jungle, <laughs> or uh, Mythical Beast, myth Mythical and Magical Beast, or something like that. So um, keep your eyes open for that, because I'm wanting to make more creatures. I have got stacks and stacks and stacks of creature patterns and I thought this might motivate me to make some creatures. So if that sounds fun to you and or you just been wanting to learn and this might be motivation for you, come on ahead and join us for our creature feature make along. We're going to start that on January 1st and we're going to run it till December 31st. And so you'll have all year to make 12 creatures. Um, and, and have a chance for some prizes. So anyway, so that's kind of all our social media and make along news. And um, now I'm gonna move on and talk about finished objects. Okay, uh, again, this week I have one finished object and two quasi finished objects. You're gonna hear that a lot until I finish this blanket. Um, but I wanna share those with you. My first finished object is a long abandoned, well not long abandoned, but a long languishing whip. This is in my April 9 Designs a Halloween Kitty Cats bag. April 9 Designs, she has donated a prize to the I Am Worth It Make Along and she makes beautiful bags. Uh, this is one of her double zipper bags so you can put your yarn in it and, and she's got a little tab here so you can pull your yarn through. And as always, she has a beautiful, um, has a beautiful, um, tape measure in here um i finished my sheep love hat i finished my sheep love hat this is a pat this is a free pattern on ravelry uh by donna k and i believe it was made for a uh, fiber festival if i remember right i believe it was made for the new hampshire sheep and wool festival okay so this is a sheep love hat and this is my first attempt at truly at color work and here's my hat okay so um i've learned a couple of things from doing this first of all this hat is too small for me i think because i can put it on but when i put it on it pulls apart the stitching so much that i can see my floats see like right there you can see my floats um so i think i need well actually what i think i need to do is do like my friend antonia did on her goat hat is turn it inside out when I get to the color work because I think I needed just a little bit more um, give in this color work section. It, it fits okay. It, you can tell, definitely tell this band is snugger than the, the brim or the top. But, um, and this yarn doesn't really plump up like true color work yarn would. So I think if I had used um, true true yarn for color work, it might not have be so noticeable. But I mean, it's fine. It works fine. It's warm. Um, uh, yeah, I need to weave in my hands there. At least it fits other than uh, I, I might need to make the next size up. Although this brim is fitting just fine. So I think I just need to practice being a little bit looser with my color work. Like I said, maybe knit it inside out and then um, it won't be so snug. And no, my floats are not pretty at all. <laughs> but anyway, so I got that finished. I picked that back up this week and 
uh, decided I would knock that out because uh, I wanted to have something to enter in the Happy Knits uh, fall cowl. So I uh, finished that. So that's in my cute little bag from April 9 Designs. Okay, and she has an Etsy shop. My other two quasi-finished objects are I have completed two more blocks for my Marine Life Cowl by Two Hearts Crochet. So, um, two weeks ago, the block was this crab, so I finished him. I actually ran out of this yarn, this blue variegated yarn, and thankfully, since it is big box red heart yarn, I was able to uh, buy another skein and finish it. So, there's my crab. And then this past week's block was my, the sea turtle. So I finished him. Okay. So again, those will go together with the other two blocks that I showed. I showed these last time, but I'll quickly flash them up. This, the starfish and then the blue whales block. Uh, there's 12 total blocks in this blanket. So we are one third. Well, with this week's block, we're a little over a third of the way done. Uh, with making the blocks and then we will set them together into a blanket and then I'm probably going to back it with some Probably some quilting cotton because I think it would be way too hot if I put like a fleece backing or something on it So those are my two finished objects or my three or my one and my two quasi finished objects for this week So now we're gonna work move on to works in progress Okay, well, I messed my hair all up by putting that hat on. So I've got a few works in progress this week. I have picked back up a couple of things that I had kind of sat to the side and started working on those uh, again. And one of those was is in my Tesla Knits periodic table bag, which uh, Jasmine of Tesla Knits was kind enough to donate prizes to my previous make-along. You may have won one of her beautiful bags. Um, and she has an Etsy shop also. She is an electrical engineering graduate student, and this is her side hustle to help pay for school. So uh, I encourage you to go check out her, her uh, shop. I love her bags because they, they are made in such a way that you can put them down in your purse or in your book bag or something. What is in this bag is, as you probably remember, the Couch and Crackers Socks by uh, Julia of the Happy Knitting Podcast. This is her first sock pattern. It is a pay-for pattern on Ravelry. I was trying to find the front page. It's all crunched up there. So that's the Couch and Crackers socks. There's a little motif on it. Um, her boyfriend said reminded her, him of crackers. So um, I'm knitting this out of uh, Craftsy uh, Cloudborn uh, fingering. And that hat, I forgot to mention my uh, Sheep Love hat, is knit out of their Highland Decay. Or Cloudborn Highland DK. So um, that's their um, fingering white yarn. And I am, I actually got through about three fourths of a pattern repeat on these. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't let them get all loosey goosey like they were. Um, I have to be careful because when I start concentrating on knitting a pattern, it's when things go off the rails, it seems like for me. So I have to make sure I keep my tension good. On these so you can kind of see the little motifs there um, the little crackers looks like saltine crackers on that so uh, I, those are kind of my if I need something to work on that I don't have to have to pay attention but I kind of have to pay attention uh, they make good meeting knitting because it's a fairly easy pattern to memorize so that is the couch and crackers socks uh, by Julie from happy knits and this bag is by Tesla knits Okay, uh, the next thing that I have is this week's block on the Marine Life Crochet Along. You can't tell a whole lot about it, but it's in my Kitty Cat's Mood Drawstring Bag by Fat Bottom Bags. And I've tried to look them up, and I'm not having very good luck finding them on the internet because if you type in Fat Bottom Bags, you better be really ready for what's going to show up. This week's um, block is Baby Sharks, and I know there's a song. <laughs> about baby sharks. I have blessedly not heard it yet. But um, anyway, so that's this week's block. And this is again is corner to corner crochet. And I just started this block. Um, I'm making the uh, ocean, this turquoise blue color. And I am on the row right before you start adding in the little sharks. 
So that's as far as I've gotten on this one. But um, yeah, so that's how far I am on that. And again, I'm just making that out of various acrylic yarns that people have given to me because a blanket around here has to be washable. <laughs> That's just the rules around here because there's going to be a dog or two or four and a cat or two or four on it. Eventually, the cat or somebody's going to puke on it. I mean, it's got to be able to be washed. <laughs> it's just simple fact. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm working on is in my Silver Shed USA bag. Uh, my Purple Foxes bag, Silver Shed USA. Uh, and in this uh, bag, I have a pattern by Laura from It's a, Crochet a Crocheting Whovian. And she just released this for her birthday. And she started to knit along on it on Monday the 8th. It's a Myrtle kind of day. It's a hat. It's a fingering weight hat. And um, it's a pay for pattern on Ravelry. But it's very economically priced and it kind of has a similar motif to her uh, sunrise sunburn sunset cowl so I am currently working on the ribbing on it so this is as far as I've gotten I cast on on Monday and I have worked I worked on it uh, a little bit on Monday and um, and then I haven't worked on it much since then it's got three inches of ribbing on it, and then um, you start the patterning, okay? I am knitting this out of a fingering weight yarn that I actually dyed in a class with Logan and Jose from Leon Alexander Yarns. They came to the local yarn shop in Conway, Arkansas, where I work, and they taught a class on yarn dyeing, so I was fortunate enough to be able to attend their class. And it's this beautiful, um, very brightly colored rainbow. And it's knitting up so pretty. I couldn't be any happier with how this is knitting up. And it's kind of hard. The light in here is not super great. So you can kind of see that there. Okay, I'm super happy with how that's knitting up. Um, and I'm actually going to take Logan's Color Theory class at East Texas Fiber Festival, which is coming up, I believe it is in... It's in about a month. It's actually about a month away right now. I've got my hotel room reserved. I've got my classes paid for. I'm all, all set to go. I've just got to go get the oil changed in my car. So um, I'm ready to go. So I'm excited about that. I'm taking that and I'm taking a class on uh, how to do cabling and crochet. So uh, I'm pretty excited about both of those. Okay, the next thing that I'm making is a mystery knit along by Michelle Steed Crafty Flutterby. And so if you are doing the in the rough mystery knit along and you don't want to see, then you need to go find something else to do for a few minutes <laughs> uh, and come back in about three or four minutes. So um, this is the in the rough mystery knit along. We are on clue three. Okay, we are on clue three and I have actually managed to keep up with this thing. I'm very proud of myself. Um, and... I'm working, I'm currently working my way through um, the first part of Clue 3. I'm about, I'm not quite halfway through the first section of Clue 3. Or maybe a third of the way is a better way to say it. Um, I am knitting this out of um, Primrose Yarn Company, Sophia in the Blackberry colorway. Boy, this light is terrible. Let's see if I can do something about that. No. <laughs> that was a big no. All right. Blackberry. And then this is Expressions Fiber Arts in their um, Endangered Species Colorway Snow Leopard. This is a, a MCN yarn. This is a Sophia Base MCN yarn. And then this is um, their um, uh, wool and silk blend. And this is all messed up because my ball winder and I had a fight. <laughs> but... We, we made up. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so this is um, the In the Rough Mystery Knit Along. And I think it is meaning in the rough as in diamond in the rough because there are some diamond um, motifs on here as we go, some diamond patterning. And this is where I'm at. Okay, it's a triangular shaped shawl. 
Now, I've made a few little mistakes, but I've managed to keep from straying off too badly. Okay, this is a triangular shaped shawl, and there is going to be beading on this at the end of this clue. And we'll get to my whole beading debacle here in just a little bit. Hadn't started the beading on this one yet, so not this one. Okay, so yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with how those colors look together. I think they're working really well together. Um, I'm pleased with how it's going together and how I'm doing on it. And I think it's going to be a beautiful shawl when I'm done. So I'm anxious to get on through on that and get that done so that I can see how it's going to turn out. Um, so that is the In the Rough Mystery Knit Along. And that is in my April 9 Designs Playful Otters bag. So this is another one of Charlotte from April 9 Designs bags here. I really enjoy her bags very much. Um... So, yeah, so that's her play flowers bag, and it has the measuring tape inside of it also. So, good value for money there. Okay, last but not least, this is a beautiful little Halloween bag, cute little Halloween bag by a Magpie Knits, Agatha, who I met through the virtual knit night that I do. She has an Etsy shop, and she is not too terribly far from me. She is in Louisiana, and she makes cute bags that are great value for money. Um, and I bought a few from her. <laughs> With my whole, I wasn't going to buy anything to lease Texas. Kind of went the way of the dodo, unfortunately. All right. This is the Gothic Angel Mystery Knit Along by Boo Knits. Okay. And this is how far I am. I did the first part, the, the first few, you know, I was probably about 25 rows in. I looked at the spoiler pictures and realized my stuff looked terrible, so I ripped it back. Started fresh. Because I have a really hard time ripping back and keeping up with, there's a lot of um, lacy stuff on this, so there's yarn overs and pearl through the back loop and all this different stuff so I ripped back because I couldn't and yes I know I should have put a lifeline in but I thought I'm only 20 rows in I don't need a lifeline lies <laughs> fake news fake news I did need a lifeline um so I ripped it back and I knitted it again and it looked really nice it looked like it was supposed to I was really proud of myself um, then I started to put, I got up to the section where I was going to start putting beads on. And I had bought a beading tool from the Gossamer Web. I bought one of these Flegel beaders. Because I didn't have a crochet hook that was small enough to use the size 6 beads. So one of these Flegel beaders where you can, and I like this because you can put a whole lot of beads on it. And it's got the little, um, oops, there we go. It's got the little thing where you can catch, well you can't really tell too much about that can you well it's got a little divot in it like a crochet hook and I thought I had bought the right size for size 6 beads either my beads are all poorly reamed and they're too small I cut my yarn twice cut my yarn twice Trying to put a bead on it because I was having to really push on it to get it to go over. After the first time, I tried to tie it so it would look right. That wasn't gonna look right. That was gonna bug the crud out of me. I thought, okay, let me just let me just go on and see if I can do the rest of these. Got one on. Got another one on. Cut the next one. And this is lace weight yarn. Okay, I forgot to show y'all the yarn. Um, it is beautiful, beautiful yarn called West Texas Sunset by Kim Marie Knitnax. Okay, beautiful, beautiful yarn. I'm very excited about this shawl. Bought these really pretty gold beads to go on it. Cut me yarn twice. Said that already, right? So I started trying to tick back. I couldn't keep up with where I was at. So I threw it away. <laughs> oh, I 
I threw it away. And I thought, okay. I ordered a different tool that's a size smaller. And yeah, I know you can use crochet hooks and you can use super floss and all that stuff. And I probably should just... I tried to find the right size crochet. I didn't have a small enough hook. I have a 10 steel hook, but I need a 12. Um, so, I just thought, okay. Just put it down. Walk away from it for a little while. And come back to it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not mad at it anymore. <laughs> I've actually got the itch to want to work on it again. So when my tool comes, hopefully by the end of the week it'll come. So when my tool comes, I can um, start it again. And I'm going to put a lifeline in after the first 20 rows. Or the first, there's a section, there's one section and then you switch needles and there's a different section. I'm going to put the lifeline in where I switch needles, I think. And then I'm going to put a lifeline in about every, probably every 20 or 30 rows. So, anyway, we're going to get to that, but this is kind of the theme this past week. Um, I went to a thing for this physics majors called Failure is an Option. And it was a faculty panel of some of us talking about, you know, we didn't, we're not brainiacs. We struggled in school. We learned the, by the school of hard knocks just like everybody else did. And I think sometimes I set myself up to say, oh, you can do this. Why can't you do this? Well, I can do it. It's just right now my brain space is used up by other things. And it's okay if you don't get done in the time for the mystery. I mean, she's putting out all these clues within 15 days. There was no way I was going to keep up anyway. Um, it's not a strictly Halloween looking shawl. It can be worn any time. So I just said, it's okay. I gave myself permission to not worry about it, and then and then I wasn't mad at it anymore. So anyway, so that is the Gothic Angel Mystery Knit Along. That is, oh, it technically is a work in progress, even though I don't have any work to show you. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to come back now and talk a little bit about future crafting. Okay, I don't have very much to talk about this week on future crafting because I have so many plates spinning that I don't want to get in over my head too much. Um, one of the things that I do need to work on, and this is not a future crafting object, but it's one that I've already made. Some of the ladies on the virtual knit night want some of the feed sack bags that I make. So uh, I was talking with them over there. I've got the feed sacks washed. This is one I actually finished. Um, but I just use, you know, a lot of feed sacks have really pretty pictures on them. So this is one of my mini horse feed bags and I made this for myself. Um, and I make these shopping bags out of them. I put the, the webbing handles on them and then they're fully lined. Okay. So this one is fully lined. You can see there. Uh, and I do kind of square the bottoms off on them so that you can sit stuff down in them. Uh, but I was talking to Laura and Miss Shirley on there, and they were excited to have one. So I'm going to fix them up a couple of bags. I'm also doing a bag swap. Uh, I signed up for the Christmas Project bag swap. And um, I'm Laura from A Crocheting Hoovian is my partner. So I'm not going to show you the fabric that I have picked out because I know she will watch this. So you're just going to have to wait, Laura, because I don't trust you not to look. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so I've got there. They're sitting right here. If you could look down, you know, if you could telepathically communicate to Willie to hold them up, he might show you. But um, now nah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't spoil the surprise. Uh, but anyway, so I'm making um, a project bag, a Christmassy project bag for Laura from a crocheting hoovy, and I'm excited about that. I think she will really enjoy it. A couple of other things. Um, I went through some uh, stuff. I was kind of tidying up my craft room. And years and years ago, my friend Jackie made a beautiful pine tree quilt. And I wanted to make it too. So I, you know, back in the graduate school days, and I'm not proud that I did this, I guess. But back in graduate school days, when you're on a fixed income, you photocopy stuff. And this is the photocopy I made in the physics department at OU in probably about 1995 or 6 of this uh, tree quilt. Okay, 
and she made hers with gr different colored greens and it was really pretty so I think I want to do that too and this uses speed piecing techniques so you do some speed piecing to be able to make your blocks even and I think that that would be a really cute top to make up so I've got a whole bunch of green fat quarters and so I think I'm going to make up this quilt top or eventually I'm going to make up this quilt top the other thing that I found, my mother every year used to buy me the um, cross stitch keepsake calendar. This is the one from 2007. And each month it had um, different images on it. Okay. So, and then in the back of the calendar was the patterns for all of these different things. Okay. Well, around here, it's always Halloween around here. <laughs> As you can see from my friendly witch frog here and my Halloween angel and little witchy. You can hardly see her sitting up there. I want to do this eventually. Isn't that adorable? That little witch kitty. Isn't she cute? I want to make her as well. Um, next week, I will pull out the, um, the cross stitch my mom made me for Halloween. It was from one of these calendars. And it's a haunted house, and it's got little finger puppets that go with it. I need to pull that out and put it up anyway for Halloween. So I'll show that next week. But I would like to make her eventually. So these always have beautiful patterns in them. Um, I don't know if they even still make these. I figure they probably do. Uh, but, you know, when you get to the end of the calendar, then all the charts are there with the thread list and so on. So, Okay. So that's all I have for future crafting this week because, um, like I said, I got too many irons in the fire and I just don't want to overdo it. Oh, and the other thing that I want to make, just real quickly, if I ever get ambitious enough to try to do this, is um, it's the December one. There's a pretty little table runner with um, gingerbread men and fruit on it. Isn't that cute? Try to make that. Anyway, so that's my future crafting. I'm not going to commit to a whole lot. And, and I, who knows, I may never ever get those made. But I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. Uh, anyway, so now we're going to come back uh, and talk about acquisition. So that's all my crafty content for this week. And um, I'm going to show you some. I got a beautiful gift in the mail, as I mentioned, from um, Mary. And then I also went to the Arkansas Yarn Crawl kind of by accident. So, um, anyway, um, I'm going to share some things that I got there. But if you're just here for the crafty content, we're done for this week. And I hope you enjoyed it and you'll come back. And if, if you want to see the acquisitions and then hear about some science, let's move on. Okay. Um, I came home a few days ago to a very big box on my front porch. And I was I was like, whoa, a box. And I, and I, Miss Mary had contacted me and said that she would like to send me a couple of project, or some project bags, or a project bag. Um, and so I gave her my address. I was not expecting what I got. First of all, she sent me some beautiful fruit, some delicious oranges, which I have already eaten all of, and some pomegranates from her own trees. Um, she sent me some candy, which was delicious <laughs> and it's long gone. Um, and then she sent me some bags and some yarn. And she said in her note that she sent this very sweet note, um, very kind note. And she said, so I could do what I wanted to with this. She said, I would say, you know, you can do whatever you like with this. You can give it away. You can keep it. But she said, I would suggest that the big bag would be an excellent oat delivery system for pumpkin. Now she makes these bags. Um, for her daughter Rachel's gifts, and her daughter Rachel is on the board of directors of the Cure CMD Foundation, and we're going to talk quite a bit about Cure CMD and what CMD, um, congenital muscular dystrophy, is in the science segment, because I've tried to learn about it. I was curious to find out more about it, but her daughter Rachel is on the board of directors of that group and also has um, CMD. So she makes these um, for her daughter uh, to, for gifts and, and things, and she does not sell them. So I feel very, very honored to have received this. And this bag, when I saw the one she was talking about, I was just overcome 
and overcome again. <laughs> anyway, y'all look at that. Is that not amazingly beautiful? It's women scientists. And this bag, y'all, it is so wonderfully well made. I am just punkin' an eye, but especially I am blown away. So, Mary, this is, I don't know what to say. This is, thank you so much. I am honored to have this, and I will, this bag is, is very precious to me. So, I'm going, I am going to keep this as maybe not as an oat delivery system, although I might put some treats and take it out to pumpkin. Um, she sent some other bags as well, and I'm going to use some of these as prizes um, and maybe keep one, or, one for myself. She sent this one with the planets on it. Perfect, perfect. She sent this adorable sheep bag. I love that. <laughs> little happy sheep. And then she sent these little science guys bag. And this is another little handbag top with the nice bottom on it. So those are amazing. So definitely may, some of those will show up as prizes, I'm sure. Um, but I'm just, those are so beautiful. And then, after all of that, and she certainly did not have to do this, there was a bag in there with some yarn in it. And I got to looking at it, and I noticed the name. It was Cat Pink, K-A-T Pink. And this is yarn um, by the Ba Yarn Company, Okay. And uh, they are located also in California, and this is a DK base. This yarn is dyed in honor of Cat Coyle. And Cat Coyle was the person one, who came up with the design for one of the pussy hats. And she owns the Little Knittery Yarn Shop in Atwater Village in um, Silver Lake, California. And um, she wanted to do something to express her strong feelings about the way women are being treated right now. Uh, and also about how minorities are being treated and about how disabled people are being treated. And um, so she did. And she said she wanted to see a sea of pink. And we all know how that worked. And I was very proud to see, I could not be there, but I was very proud to see all of the women who were there and I was with them in spirit. She was also instrumental in starting the Welcome Blanket Project, which I talked about. And Mary actually shared a photograph with me today. And I will try to uh, link it um, of all the packages from the uh, Atlanta um the School of Design, SCAD Museum of Art and Design, no, that's Savannah, the Museum of Art and Design in Atlanta that um, had the Welcome Blanket Project where they were trying to get 2,000 miles worth of blankets because 2,000 miles is the length of the proposed border wall. And they did it, y'all, they did it. So she was instrumental in that Welcome Blanket Project uh, getting that off the ground too. And so Mary had this skein of yarn and she sent it to me and I'm going to, this is going to be one of those special, special yarns that I'm going to cherish. And I think what I'm going to do, Mary, I'm going to knit the She Rises hat out of this because I want to make myself a new one because I made that other one the wrong size. This is the perfect yarn for that She Rises hat. It's the right. It's you. You. It's like you knew to send it. You knew that I needed it, and you knew what size to send. This is the right. This is the right weight, and this is the perfect color for that she rises hat. So I'm gonna make myself a she rises hat out of this and go to wearing it around. Um. Because we need to do that. So Mary, I, I've I told I sent you a message and told you thank you. I. Uh, a thank you, a simple thank you is certainly not in any way enough for this. Um, I am going to talk about Rachel's Charity Cure CMD in the science section and talk a little bit about 
uh, what I have learned in reading about congenital muscular dystrophy. So I hope that y'all will stick around for that. But Mary, I just wanted to say a great, big, huge thank you. You have no idea how that box came at the right time that day where I really needed to see it. So for you thinking of me, I am tremendously touched. So thank you. Okay. <sighs> now. Um, okay. So I... <laughs> <laughs> to move on to um, less lofty projects. Um, I have been wanting this pen. And oh, yes, I know I needed a few more pens, didn't I? I have Creative Cats on, um, on Instagram. Creative Cats. I think her name is Lauren Katz is her name. Um, she has a pen design company. And that little sticker is one of her designs. Well, she has this positive space pen so she sent me this little print of it but she had a sale where you could get this positive space pen and I have been wanting one for a long time so I ordered myself a positive space pen Let's see if you can get that to focus and then she also had the forest sprite pen taking care of the forest so those are my two little pens from creative cats Then, um, as I mentioned, I had bought in a project bag from A Magpie Knits. On, she is on Etsy as A Magpie Knits and also on Instagram. She makes really adorable project bags that are good value for money. And they are such that they're very easy to fit. They're the right size to put a project in on the go to fit like in a purse or a, a, a carry-on bag or something. So she had a, a deal for free shipping. And she put up her Halloween bags. <laughs> So, I got the one Halloween bag, and then I got this one, which is really sweet. I like the little skeleton guys on it and the little spiders. Okay, I know some people don't like spiders, but I don't mind spiders. But what really won me over was that lining. Isn't that cute? And it kind of acts like it glows in the dark. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that. Then she also had, this is her medium zipper project bag. And then she had what she calls her ball and sock bag. So ball-y and socky bags. So this is the cute little turkey bag. I thought I was just so charmed by those little turkeys. And these are snap top bags. So you can put your yarn down in it and just pull your yarn out. It's got a little wrist strap on it so you can walk while you knit. And then this is the smaller size for a one skein project with the little woodland creatures on it. So I was just charmed to bits with those. And I thought they were just adorable. So um, go check her out. She also dyes yarn. So she's a magpie knits. And I'll knit all of that. Knit. <laughs> I'll link all of that down in the um, notes. Huh, okay. Well, my friend Carol and I, on Saturday, we decided to go gander. Which means we're just going to go gander around. And we kind of tell her husband we'll be somewhere in this half of the state walk, driving around. Well, we were going to go, there was a paranormal expo um, in Little Rock, and we were going to go to that. But I said, hey, the Arkansas Yarn Crawl, I've never done a yarn crawl. I'm still a novice at all that. The Arkansas Yarn Crawl is this weekend. Let's go by the store in Conway where I work and check it out. Now, I still need to make it over to my local yarn shop because this runs till the 13th. So I'm going to try to make it over to Stephanie's shop tomorrow. And pick up a few little odds and ends for my advent calendar swap that I'm doing through the A Crocheting Whovian um, group. So, Arkansas Yarn Crawl, we got a great bag with lots of little goodies in it. Okay, got lots of little goodies, some needle minders, and little end, needle end caps, and some stickers, and some um, notepads. And then, as with most yarn crawls, I'm, I expect, you got your little passport. Oops. You got your little passport and you go to the different shops. So when I go to Stephanie's shop on tomorrow, I will have four shops out of the seven because the other three are way up in Northwest Arkansas and I'm not going to make it up there. So um, I'm going to fill it out and take that over to Stephanie's shop. Okay. And so I am... We went to several of the different shops. I bought needles at Knit Two Together, but I also bought this adorable little Notions pouch, which is locally made. It's a little vinyl 
notions pouch, but you can probably tell what caught my eye about it. And it had a little dog bone progress keeper that I've got on that gothic angel shawl. Okay, and then had to get him. He was, you know, I get suckered in by the stuff up at the checkout counter. Do y'all do that? I'm like a kid in the candy up by the check stand. So they had a little sloth on the yarn cake there. And then they had um, the the twisted pearl was giving away pins, so or buttons. So they had buttons for everybody. So I, that was one of my freebies. And then also locally made was this little elephant progress keeper. Okay, it was really cute. So um, got that. And then we went to the shop in Little Rock and looked around. And I saw a really neat. I didn't buy anything there, but I'm going to go back. Because there, they carry a yarn by a young woman out of Florida who dies, who learned to dye yarn as a science, homeschool science project, and now she sells yarn. And uh, she sells only through local yarn shops. So I want to go back and try to get some of her yarn. Then we went to the Paranormal Expo, and we were not impressed. It just wasn't, you know, do you ever go somewhere and it just don't feel right? Well, that's kind of how, how we felt at the... Um, at the Paranormal Expo. So we decided, Carol said, well, how much further is it down there to that shop? And I said, well, it's in Arkadelphia. It's like an hour. She said, oh, let's go. So we jumped in the Jeep and off we went. Okay, oh, Willie's bored by all this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so we went to this store in Arkadelphia, which is in a house. It's in an old house, which is kind of cool. And uh, the first thing that caught my attention was when you walked in, they had this shawl on display. This is a pattern written by also an Arkansas native. The lady lives in Little Rock, Arkansas um, by Kay Metters of Natural State Knits. Okay, it is a fingering weight shawl. Um, and the yarn it uses is made by Colored by Christy, who happens to be local to that shop. She's from Arkadelphia, Arkansas. And this is the yarn that they use to knit that shawl. This is her, um, this is the color of the year for that shop. It's, ca it's called Till We Meet Again. Okay, Till We Meet Again. And um, it's her soupy sock, which is a light fingering weight. It's 75.25, okay, and uh, 463 yards in 100 grams. And it's got some beautiful blue, teal blue in it and some green. It was really pretty. And then they also had the beads already there. Because Lord knows I need to do another beaded shawl. But I'm a sucker for marketing. And it was a good, you got a, you got the pattern for free if you purchased the yarn. You didn't have to buy the beads, but I, they were not very expensive. So I went ahead and got them. So, yeah, so much for not buying anything till East Texas. But I'm supporting the local economy, right? That's what I'm telling myself. Um, so I got those things and then I got a little bag. It's another little notions pouch. Y'all, I'm a sucker for animals on bags. I needed that like I needed a hole in the head. But this is also made by somebody local. This is made by the Bob and Weave. <laughs> the Bob and Weave. And she is also located in Arkansas. So I like the idea of supporting Arkansas makers. So, um, anyway, so I got that little notions pouch. I mean, it's, you could put a small project in it, I suppose too, but I would probably use it more as a kind of a catch-all little bag. So, so much for not buying anything. So, I just said, oh, okay, well, I'll just not go as wild when I get to East Texas. Yeah, right. I found out today, though, I'm getting a raise at work. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell that or not. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about, well, yeah, so I'm getting a little bit of a raise, so maybe that'll, maybe that will, um, offset my inability to control myself. But anyway, so that's the Arkansas Yarn Crawl. Yay! First time I've ever done a yarn crawl, so that was really big fun. And me and Carol had a big time, and I was glad that we went and did it. It's always fun to spend time with friends anyway, so it was a much-needed gander. <laughs> anyway, so that's a little bit of over-the-top, um over the topness of an acquisition there because i've you know I, you know and here's the thing about acquisitions and when i was talking with somebody last night you know i try very hard not to be jealous of what other people have 
I try to be happy with what I have and happy for other people and what they have. And, you know, I made a choice when I moved out here on this farm to have to live kind of hand to mouth until some things were paid for. So I don't begrudge anybody of their good fortune of being able to have, you know, the things that they have. I mean, yeah, my neighbors have built this big fancy house and mine's run down. And, you know, I, sometimes I kind of look at it and go, boy, that'd be nice. But you know what? I don't regret the choices that I've made. I'm happy with where I'm at in my life. And money has never been a big deal to me, I guess, because my family never had any. So I don't, I try really hard not to be begrudge other people's good fortune. So I know that some people don't enjoy watching acquisitions and that's fine and just don't watch them if you if you you know you don't know anybody else's story and you don't need to be judging them for how much they spend or how much they don't spend on wool I mean or yarn or, or needles or whatever just be happy be happy for everybody and if they're doing all right then let them do all right you know and um yeah <laughs> so my thing is, if I don't want to see what somebody's bought, I just go through that part and go on to the next part, you know. And and but I like to see. I like to be happy for people, and I like to people. I like for people to share their joy. And and I might see something that I thought was cool, and especially when it's local makers, I think that's really important. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna move on now and talk about some science. Okay. Um. I promised Miss Mary that I would talk a little bit about her daughter Rachel's charity. It's called Cure CMD, and CMD stands for Congenital Muscular Dystrophy. And I actually did not know um, how that was different than muscular dystrophy. So I decided to read up on it. I, I spent a, about two days reading, watching some videos from the Cure CMD website that were actually uh, MDs talking about breakthroughs and stuff on it. Um, Rachel is one of the board, board of directors members and she was diagnosed at a very early age with unspecified CMD. And it turns out, you know, as, as science has advanced and technology has advanced, they're getting better at identifying the, the root causes of a lot of these um, congenital diseases. And, um, she found out in 2009 what type she had and what um what congenital um muscular dystrophy is is a muscular dystrophy that presents at birth or very early on and um there's different there's different types of um congenital muscular dystrophy but they all boil down to a defect in the protein in the muscle cells where um, there is if there's a defect in the proteins and there's different types of proteins like there's a collagen and there's a um, I think a laminin laminin yeah and then there's different integrins and, and different stuff there's different types of proteins that are involved and I that stuff a lot of that just went way over my head once they really got down and dirty talking about it because I'm not a biologist um, but what it does is it causes the muscle cells to either not grow at the proper rate or grow, um, not regenerate. So this is a picture that I found where this is what normal muscle tissue looks like, where these are all the muscle cells and they're very smoothly connected and, and evenly interspersed. But with muscular dystrophy, what happens is the muscle tissue doesn't grow correctly, so you get this sort of filler tissue of connective tissue, which is not strong. And so it causes people to, who have muscular dystrophy to have hypotonia, which is kind of limpness. Uh, in babies, it shows up as they're not able to sit up or hold their heads up or roll over. Um, things like that and it can manifest from very very severe cases where there can be brain involvement and have um, some some developmental delays and there can be heart issues because our heart is a muscle uh, and eye issues to to very minor um, forms of or well, I shouldn't say minor but less severe forms of the disease where maybe uh, they just need some assistance with walking or even there may be some respiratory involvement sometimes too. Um, 
So there's a whole spectrum. I believe they said there's a total of 33 different forms of CMD that have been identified uh, in the last few years. There was really no group that was advocating for this particular type um, of, of muscular dystrophy. There was really no advocacy group for it. Most of the 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 um, things that you hear about are, are things like Duchenne and Becker types, which present later in life. They present, or I shouldn't say later in life, but they present in late childhood or early adulthood. And so there's a lot of advocacy for those groups, but there's not, um, there's not as much, and there was really no support group for this, for this form of it. So a group of people came together, including Rachel, to develop this, um, to develop this, um, organization called Cure CMD, and Rachel actually volunteered for four years with the group before becoming their first employee in 2012. Um, and she is a uh, board secretary. She's also director of operations for the nonprofit, and she is the chair of the outreach committee. So she's very active in the organization, and I'm sure would love to tell you more. So if you want to know more, I, they have a website that is curecmd.org, and I'm going to link that down below. They also have a Facebook group, and there's some great informational uh, videos on there. They are trying to actually do some some research. They fund research grants. They they raise money and they fund research grants, and they've actually helped identify some of the particular genes and proteins that trigger these um, these proteins to have issues. And it, they fund a lot of research studies, and actually they have found. Um, they have found that there may be as many as 1 in 100,000 births have some form of congenital muscular dystrophy. So I've been reading a lot of different things about it. And um, so, you know, like I said, it can be, and it's hard to diagnose because babies can't tell you what's going on. So uh, it can be things like a child is slow with their motor skill development, or there can be some significant learning disabilities in very severe cases or, or cardiac involvement even. Um, but it all boils down to um, a defect in the proteins, one of six proteins in the, in the cell, in the muscle cell structure. Um, and I read, I mean, there's all these different ones and um, some, some of them are quite severe like uh, Walker Warburg syndrome, and there's several different forms of Walker, Walker Warburg syndrome, and that's probably one of the most severe, um, where they have low muscle tone, very low muscle tone at birth, underdeveloped or atrophied muscles, and then um, eye structure problems as well with visual impairment. And unfortunately, the sad reality is most of those children don't live beyond the age of about three years old because their body is just not able to support their uh, development um so there's different uh there's different uh forms of it there's others that are like i said less severe some of them are genetically linked to particular ethnic groups um so i just read a whole lot um a whole lot about it uh one of the less severe ones is the ulrich congenital muscular dystrophy which is present birth with a weakness and poor muscle tone uh, there's some deformity and rigidity of joints, and some have excessive flexibility. Uh, but they have, they do have some respiratory impairment very often because of the muscles needed to control the diaphragm. Uh, but they have normal cardiac function and no effect on their um, intellectual abilities. So, um, so it ranges the full the full gamut of of things that can happen in the diagnosis, but it all boils down to defects in one of these six proteins. Um, so anyway, I read a lot about that. So if you want to know more, uh, this is a nonprofit. I encourage you to go check it out. Um, so, and, and like I said, they have funded quite a few research projects. They've raised a couple million dollars to fund research. Uh, and it is a and it is a group that kind of a little bit gets looked over overlooked by, you know, the bigger telethons and things like that. So go check them out. It's curecmd.org or go check out um, their Facebook page. And um, I'll flash this picture up there. Um, the 
the woman here on the, I guess that would be the left-hand side, that's Rachel. That is Miss Mary's daughter. So I'm very proud to get to know her and I am uh, amazed and wonder and in awe of anyone who is willing to put themselves out there and support science to try to make people's lives better. So um, yeah, so go check them out. Um, and I will talk about them probably some more uh, as the time goes on because I feel like it's a cause that's worthy of note. So other things that are going on at school, uh, yesterday we had a guest speaker. Um, I met a gentleman about a year and a half ago when I went up to the Fairfield Bay. It's kind of a retirement community where people move. Um, it, I, and why, for, uh, they kind of planned it as a planned retirement community at some point and it kind of fell through, but it's on a beautiful piece of beautiful properties on a lake. It's called Greer's Ferry Lake. And, um, a lot of people have moved from all over the country there because the, the climate's fairly temperate here. Um, there is a gentleman that I met up there. His name is Dick Groves. Now, um, he is a photographer, is a hobbyist photographer, and that's how we got to talking. But the more I talked to him, and he knew I was an astronomer, um, he worked for NASA. He worked for the IBM portion of NASA, and he was in mission control and involved in the missions on all of the Apollo missions, all of them. He was there when they stepped on the moon, <laughs> which I think is freaking amazing. Um, and he had a lot of cool stories and, and you know, he didn't have the easiest road to hoe experience either. So we had that whole failure is an option um, program last week with the students where we talked to them about, you know, we didn't draw a straight line between being a successful student and being where we are. In fact, if you had asked me when I was sitting where they were, what, if that I would end up where I'm at, I wouldn't have said n that. I would have said, no, I don't know. No. Um, but what I enjoyed about hearing about him is he talked about resiliency, you know, about fortune favoring the prepared mind and, you, and, and learning skills that you might not think would benefit your career. Like he took a typing class in high school and that typing class got him a position as a company clerk in the army, which made him stand out because he was so good at attention to detail that he got a job working for a Supreme, Com Supreme Commander NATO Allied Forces in Europe because of he was good because all because he took a typing class um but you know he said you know i struggled in school I, I, he came from very humble beginnings and he worked his way through school it took him 11 years to get his bachelor's degree but then the man ended up winning the presidential medal of freedom <laughs> and being in mission control for apollo 11 being in the room in the room on the critical team when they stepped out on the moon. I think that's amazing. So he came and talked to the students and he was great with them. He was very interactive. Um, he unfortunately now has macular degeneration in both eyes and does not see well anymore. Um, but he was a real pleasure to visit with and to talk to. And I hope that, um, I hope that it motivated my students a little bit. Um, I am a minority mentor this semester or this year on campus. Uh, I volunteered. It's for it's for old older faculty, more experienced faculty, <laughs> uh, to mentor junior faculty who are working on say their tenure track. But it's particularly for minorities, so ethnic minorities, uh, LGBT uh, women. Um, to tr and the, the, the mentors don't have to be a minority necessarily, but they have to be willing to work. And so I met with my with Lisa, my mentor, mentee, my protege, um, this week, and we had a wonderful conversation about things. Um, and I also met with uh, Angela Webster, who is the vice president for diversity at our university. And I'm going to have her come and talk to my class because um, we got into an interesting conversation and I kind of got into an area where I don't know a whole lot and I don't know what to say to them um, when we start talking about affirmative action. Um, as a woman, you know, I, in a male-dominated field, I want to feel like I got where I got because of my own merits. But I also know that there's that cartoon that goes around about equality versus 
justice where you've got the three people trying to look over the fence at the baseball game and there's a tall one and a medium and a short one and the short one can't see anything and there's boxes there so equality is giving everybody one box and justice and then and, and still nobody one person can barely see and the short person can't see at all and then justice is giving um the short person the two boxes you know and so on and so I, I don't know how to respond. I don't have the right experiences to know how to respond to the students um, when they say that we don't need it. You know, because I had a student come to my office and she's a young Latina woman and she's in the honors college. And she had two experiences in the last few months, one of which she was told by another honors college student that the only reason she was in the honors college is because she was Mexican and she's not Mexican she's from El Salvador um which that that's not cool and then for them to say that to her and then in another class she was studying in her organic chemistry class and she had a girl who was of Spanish heritage look at her she was minding her own business and well you're Mexican aren't you see I'm not Mexican I have white skin I don't look like her and the student went what's your point and made her, you know, kind of made the girl look stupid, which she should have, you know, that was kind of a, a cruddy thing for her to do. I don't have the experience base to know how to advocate for people like that, and I want to learn. So my protege is going to be as much a mentor to me in those experiences, but I want Angela Webster, who is an African-American woman and very well-spoken uh, in these matters, to, to come and talk to my classes. Um, so, yeah, so that's one of the things that I'm planning. Um, we are going to be um, going on fall break. We've got fall break tomorrow and the next day. I don't have much of a break because I have to go work at the middle school with Sasha and then um, I have to go... Um, help at the barn because Miss Marianne's brother has been ill and she has to take him for a medical procedure tomorrow afternoon so I told her I would run practice um so not much of a break tomorrow but I'll, I'm gonna try to go to the feed store tomorrow and then Friday my plan is to sew all morning and get these bags and I'm not going to show you done <laughs> uh, the open source book thing is going pretty well I know Dr. Kelly on U University is using an open source book and I think my students seem to like it pretty well. I need to visit with them some more about it and get more feedback on it. Um, but so far, so good. Um, I actually filled out my, I was thinking about this today because I filled out my book orders for next semester. And I'm actually going to let them just use the ebook if they want to. Because the ebook is about half the price of a regular textbook. Plus, it's already available where the physical book won't be out till February, which is a little bit late for our spring semester. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Had some interesting fireside chats today because the Nobel Prize in Physics was just awarded in the last week or so. And um, a woman was one of the winners of the Nobel Prize in Physics. And I kind of thump my student a little bit today that was talking about it because he introduced him as Dr. So-and-so for the man and then just said her name and I said isn't she a doctor too and he said well yes and I said then you need to call her that and he apologized he said I meant to call her that and then I said her first name and I got all messed up and I'm like that's fine and then he called her a girl and I'm like uh no no she's a woman and that's actually come out of that leadership workshop that I was at because last week's women's leadership luncheon was about words that we as women want to bury and want to take back take the power back from and we were just talking about that because I would never call an eminent scientist a boy so I'm not going to let an eminent scientist be called a girl either <laughs> like I said Mary you sent this at a good time <laughs> Anyway, um, what got me thinking about this is it's been 55 years since a woman has won the Nobel Prize in Physics, and there have only been three who have won it. Um, so, I know that there has been other great work done out there, so hopefully now this is turning the tide a little bit. But anyway, 
So that's kind of where we are at school. So let's move on now and talk about farm life. Okay, uh, first thing I want to say about farm life is I want to send a, a, a word of peace and comfort out to all my friends that are being affected by Hurricane Michael right now. Um, it's hitting the Gulf Coast of Florida and look like Alabama and eastern Mississippi. And it looked pretty strong and I hope that everyone is safe. Um, because we need to take care of each other. You know, Puerto Rico is still in a terrible state from that hurricane, and I, I saw, I was reading some stories about some migrant farm workers that were affected by um, the previous hurricane, and we just need to take care of each other, folks. I'm just, just going to let it go with that. Um, we need to do better. So here on the farm, I haven't had any more raccoon visits. I left the live trap out for about a week, and I guess it wasn't the family business. So I'm going to start moving my geese back into the pen. Uh, they have been in the chicken tractor with the turkeys, and they've reached a detente, but they still are kind of wary, wary of each other. So I'm going to move the I'm going to move the chick the geese back into the big pen um, probably the, this weekend. My neighbor, when she went up to visit her um, son, brought me a bag of apples back. It looked like it was maybe about a quarter of a bushel of apples. So I'm working on apple butter. Those are delicious apples. I ate, ate one this morning on my way out the door. Um, I'm going to work on some apple butter. And then when the apples here come off, I'm going to try to make some apple pie filling. Um, because it's delicious. And I like having my pie filling canned so that when I make a pie, all I have to do is... Um, open the jar and dump it in the pie shell and it's ready to go um so gonna working on that still you know canning never really ends around here i can stuff all year long had a great dressage lesson on friday uh, denise my coach came down and taught several group lessons and gusty and i had a great ride we got a beautiful canner um, transition going to the right going to the left it was a little sloppy but going to the right oh it just felt wonderful it was so awesome and then Eleanor rode Bo afterwards he is so lazy we're having a hard time getting him to canter he doesn't quite know where his feet are at either so we've got to build up some muscle tone in there so he can kind of figure out how to use his use himself to pick up that canter with a person on him um you know, I've been looking outside, definitely feel fall in the air today. Now, it was incredibly hot last week in, in the first part of this week, but today you can definitely feel fall in the air, and the leaves are just starting to change. I went up to the Dover Lights, uh, which is a an area, a scenic overlook, that there's some mysterious lights we'll talk about sometime um, at, and you looked down you know, in the valley, and the leaves are just starting to, just barely starting to turn color. The goldenrod is blooming like crazy right now. It looks just beautiful. Um, but that also means the pigweed is blooming too. <laughs> uh, Jacob is going to come this weekend, and I'm going to put him to work on a couple of projects. I need to repair the bottoms of some rabbit cages, and I want to finish my, um, I started a pigeon aviary and I don't have pigeons anymore there was a two sections that we never finished and I want to finish it out it just into one big pen so that I can move my show chickens over into that section uh, so he's supposed to come on Sunday he is uh, he's gonna tell me all about his job how it's going too. he got a job working in the lab at one of the aluminum uh, mining facilities down south of Little Rock so I'm looking forward to hearing about that uh, everybody else seems to be doing well. The minis have been enjoying being out in the pasture, but they've started coming in again for their feed. They didn't come in for a couple of days. They were kind of being rebellious and not coming in, but they figured out that that's where the groceries are. Um, so they come in of an evening and, and get fed. Uh, the cattle seem to be doing good. I need to drive over and look at their pasture. My neighbor had come when he brought me that live trap and looked at my tractor and said it was the battery cable ends. So I've got to go into the co-op tomorrow. So I'm going to try to remember to pick up some battery cable ends while I'm there. Because I need to do some bush hogging. Um, that, that goat weed's going to go to seed soon. And I want to get it cut down before it goes to seed if I can. Um, 
I bought some fall vegetables. I'm going to get those set out while I'm off for fall break. Just some lettuces and some greens and things just to have some fresh greens. And if I keep my lettuce kind of protected, I'll have lettuce pretty much all winter long if I'll kind of keep it protected a little bit from the frost. So, um, but yeah, I mean, farm is just kind of steady as she goes right now. There's not a lot... Um, going on in terms of um, big stuff just because with work it's hard to get any big projects done um, through the week and so I'm hoping when when Jacob comes this weekend we can get that aviary pen finished and I'm going to try to get my tractor started and go do some bush hogging too but um, the horses at the barn are doing good Gusty like I said rode great Flame's been doing really well um, Bo's been doing good so everything there is just clicking right along um, got to make some decisions about next year about breeding and stuff like that because Gusty will be 16 years old next year so I think I want to try to breed her there is a lady that has a Frisian stallion and I'd kind of like to go that way if I can so I'm going to find out how much she wants for stud fees on him and Trixie's doing good growing like a weed she's huge you know she's getting big 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 and tall she's certainly not a baby anything resembling a baby anymore so puppy dogs and everybody are doing pretty good um you know they're definitely changing into their fall sleeping patterns where they want to kind of den up a little bit more and the kitty cats are doing good too so um yeah so that's kind of kind of what's going on around here um just kind of keeping on keeping on i'm glad for fall break i'm trying to get into the mood to put my halloween decorations up i've had, kind of had a hard time getting in the festive mood you know i don't know why there's really no reason other than just just is you know so um but anyway i'm gonna try to get my try to get at least get my yard decorations put up so that i'll have my big blow up stuff out in the yard for the trick-or-treaters when they come i don't get a lot of trick-or-treaters but i do get a few so i try to make sure that i make sure that i have my decorations up for them so um i wrote a letter to my senior pen pal and i also uh, packaged up my square to send to maria from ninja chicken so i'm gonna get those in the mail tomorrow um, I don't have any stamps and I haven't had a chance to stop at our little post office So I'm gonna try to stop tomorrow and get that taken care of but other than that here on the farm. We're just kind of Just kind of keeping on keeping on, you know, nothing nothing too exciting, but that's probably okay <laughs> Sometimes things get too exciting around here and they don't need to be so uh, But anyway, so that's kind of where we're at So I guess we're gonna move on and finish up with a few final thoughts Okay, guys, um, I wanted to finish up with a few final thoughts, and I don't know what the right word is for the way I feel sometimes. Sometimes I just let, I guess, as Wendell Berry says, the despair of the world grow in me. You know, obviously things politically for someone with my belief system have been very uh, challenging lately, and... I have had wor not angry words, but I have seen people say things that I don't think they really understand their full impact on, on others when there is a conversation about, you know, um, when, you, when you tell your Me Too story and people belittle you or even threaten you for speaking out. I have seen this happen to people that I know, and it's been very disappointing. But I will say this, I did have an experience with one person and another friend spoke up and she was ridiculed by all his friends. And I messaged him privately because one of his friends had actually threatened her and called her a bad name. And I messaged him privately and I said, look, let me explain a few things to you. Um, you know, and, and, and he, you know, he's, he's gay and he grew up here in small town, Arkansas. So he understands what it's like to be bullied. Um, he doesn't live here anymore, but he grew up here. And I said, you know, there's a lot of reasons why women don't disclose at the time. I, and here's the reasons I didn't. And I, you know, that was me telling him, you know, he never knew that. So I explained to him and I said, and when your friend threatens 
like he did, he is exactly the reason why we have this problem. And I just want you to understand that, okay? Whether you agree or not, this needs to play itself out in the justice system. Well, we all know that that didn't work out, but, but nevertheless, we're going to persist, right? But I, you know, and he was actually receptive and he said, you know, I'm so, and I don't know if he reached out or not to our mutual friend. He said he was going to, but we'll see. I don't know if he did or not. And I'm not going to ask. It's not my business. Um, but what I thought about is kind of goes back to where I was talking about people being provocative a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week. I thought, okay, because I could have raged at him. I could have gotten mad and deleted him and not spoken to him. And I thought, no, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to, I believe he's a rational person. I believe he just doesn't understand the perspective because he doesn't, he hasn't had, he doesn't have that experience to draw from. And so that's why I did it. And I, and, and then that's what made me decide that I wanted to have Dr. Webster come and talk to my classes because I think a lot of times when people, you know, come down in a way that seems small-minded or upsetting to us and our beliefs um i think they don't do it out of malice i think they a lot of times do it out of lack of understanding for that experience because they and it's not that they're not an empathetic person they just that's not on their radar and so i thought well i'm, I'm gonna at least put this on his radar and i think i think it was effective so i think that that's good, but also it makes you tired. And I tell you lately, y'all, I can't handle it when people post these pictures and videos of animals being killed or, you know, or shelter animals and the things that they go through. I, I can't, y'all. I know that that stuff happens. I know it happens. Having it thrown in my face, there are days I just can't do it. I can't because I grieve myself to death over animals that there is no way anything I can do to help them. You know, I grieve myself to death over photographs of animals being euthanized or being killed. Um, you know, and, and I know there's nothing I can do about it. So all it does is make me feel more helpless. And, you know, people who are cruel to animals posting pictures on Facebook and saying you're a bad person is not going to stop them because there's something pathologically wrong with them where they're not going to stop no matter what you do. So sometimes I think that I let the despair of the world <laughs> grow in me. And on Sunday, I was driving... Um, up in the National Forest, and I just bawled. I just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried about these animals that I can't do anything about. And that just hit me all of a sudden. And I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to deal with this sadness. What do I do? How do I, how do I, how do I carry this? How do I, this world, how do I, how do I just make it in this world? And I thought to myself when I got home and kind of had composed myself, you know, I, I thought to myself about a poem by Wendell Berry. And I walked out into the pasture and I just kind of sat out there among the trees and was listening to the horses graze. And, and I, I remembered this poem called The Peace of Wild Things. And that's what gets me through those moments when I, I, I let the despair of the world grow in me. So I'm going to share that with you. Uh, if you're not familiar with Wendell Berry, uh, he's one of my favorite writers. Uh, he is a farmer and a poet and an environmentalist. Um, he's written a bunch of books. He's from Kentucky or lives in Kentucky. Uh, just very beautifully worded. Just, his words just are a balm to my soul. So I'm going to read this poem um, called The Peace of Wild Things. When the despair of the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in the fear of what my life and what my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. 
I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. I think that that speaks to trying to live in the moment, live in the now, be present. Worrying doesn't fix anything. We all know this. So I think that whole, I, I rest in the grace of the world and am free to be able to just for a time lay down our burdens and just be one with the world, be one with Mother Nature and the trees and the air and all that. I think that the more connected we could be that way, then the more connected we would be as people, as a people. When we realize we are all connected, I think then maybe, maybe that will be the thing that saves us in the end. We are all connected. So that's where I'm going to end um, this week. And I thank y'all so very much for watching me and listening to me babble every week. I hope that you are getting something positive and uplifting out of this. I certainly have enjoyed visiting with many of you and getting to know you as my people. <laughs> as my people. Y'all are my guys or my gals. My women and my men. How about we say that? And my pups. Yes. So um, that's where we're going to end it for this week. I hope that y'all are all doing good and y'all are meeting your crafting goals. Huh. And until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And what, Willie? What? What is it? Peace out, y'all. <laughs> Bye.